Hello wonderful person, this is Anton, and today we're going to be talking about a star that we've briefly discussed previously, a star known as Tau Sitai. This star is relatively close to us, and there's something very unusual we've discovered around it that might actually give us a little bit of hope. Anyway, welcome to What The Math. <laughs> So I actually talked about this star previously, back in April of 2017, and I talked about how it has a quite a high possibility for habitable planets. Now, very recently, in August of 2017, there was another study published that makes this kind of a reality. Let's first go to a simulation known as nearest um, 400, or I guess nearest 100 stars to us, and I'm going to show you how close Tau Ceti is to our beautiful sun. So there is the sun and within about 12 light years away from our star and of course our planet Earth lies a star by the name of Tau Ceti. There it is, not very far. It's one of the closest neighbors we have to us. And what's really interesting about this star is that it's actually one of the closest, or actually no, it is the closest, but also one of the best candidates for a sun-like star. It's, it's basically an orange giant in terms of the actual mass. It's just a little bit less massive than the sun, maybe it's about 78% of the mass. But other than that, it's actually a very comfortable, very inactive uh, star that doesn't actually produce that many flares, meaning that any planet around it has a very high chance of having atmosphere, unlike red dwarfs that usually strip their planets of atmosphere completely. Now let's go back to the uh, new simulation here, and we're going to place Tau Ceti in the middle, and we're going to recreate this solar system using Universe Sandbox. So, at a distance of 12 light years away, lies this beautiful star. We're going to go and add uh, the planets automatically, but we're going to change them a little bit, because this is the old model. The new model that was discovered by uh, the uh, scientists from University of Hertfordshire in, in the United Kingdom basically present the model slightly differently from what you see here. Uh, they think, or they actually are almost certain that there is not five planets like demonstrated here, but actually four uh, terrestrial planets. And they've, they were pretty good at um, doing the math behind this, and they're pretty certain that it's actually four. Now, the way that this system looks is as follows. We're actually going to enable the uh, habitable zone so you can actually see what it looks like. We're going to remove this planet. This probably doesn't actually exist. This planet has now been officially renamed into Tau Ceti G, and the partner here is Tau Ceti H, and they're actually a little bit too close to the star, so they're not in the habitable zone. We do know that they're actually less massive. So mass here is about 1.7 masses of Earth and mass here is about two masses of Earth. So these stars are a lot less massive and whether they have atmosphere or not, they're probably a little bit too hot. So this one would be very similar to Mercury, just obviously a lot more massive in size. And the next one is maybe Venus-like, depending on whether it has atmosphere or not. But once again, the temperature here would be very, very hot. And in this simulation, it just happens to be a completely unusual water world. It has a lot of water, but it also has very hot water. Temperatures of over 70 degrees Celsius. In other words, you'd probably not want to go into this hot, hot water. But the next two planets are different. So first one here, Tau Ceti E, lays right at the border of habitable zone. And it does have a chance to be habitable. And the next one is actually a little bit closer here. It's um, on the outskirts of the habitable zone, and this planet is known as Tau Ceti F. Um, and these two planets are actually relatively uh, large in size. These are known as the super Earths. So the gravity here is much bigger than a normal Earth. And because of the high gravity, it would be very difficult to actually survive here. Now, not only are they more massive, because they're super Earths, we, we don't really know what their composition is like because we don't have these types of planets in our own solar system. 
but for all we know, maybe just maybe they are actually terrestrial. And so we're going to make them that. We're going to make them into terrestrial planets with maybe just a little bit of water on the surface. Just because we want to see what all of this will look like if we were to simulate this. So right now these are terrestrial planets with Earth-like structure, uh, but a lot more massive. Now we're going to wait a little bit and see what happens to them. I don't actually know if there is any atmosphere here right now, but as you can see the temperature is still very cold, minus 93 degrees Celsius, and the temperature here is minus 90 degrees Celsius. And that's because there is actually no atmosphere. But we're going to make an assumption that because they're so massive and because they have so much gravity, they, uh, and also because Tau Ceti is um, a sun-like star, they might actually have at least maybe some atmospheric pressure. So let's, let's give them that. Let's give both of them Earth-like atmosphere. It's, they pro might have more atmosphere, but we're just going to start with just one atmospheric pressure. And just like that, they start warming up. Now, because they are no longer ice planets, their albedo is probably going to decrease to about 40%. And we're now just going to wait and see what happens to them. So first of all, Tau Ceti E right away starts warming up and pretty much becomes a terrestrial planet. This is what it looks like. It looks very, very Earth-like. As a matter of fact, it looks maybe too Earth-like. So that's very, very unusual. This, this planet right here has a very high chance of being an Earth-like planet. Its partner, Tau Ceti um, F, is still a little bit too cold. So unless it has atmospheric pressure of maybe like three or even five atm atmospheres, um, it's probably going to be a little bit too chilly. But let's leave it at three and see what happens. So let's come back to Tau Ceti E, and as you can see, the average temperature here is 24 degrees Celsius. Very, very Earth-like conditions. It has atmosphere, it has liquid water. It also seems to have uh, maybe even some planet plant life, or is it just green for no reason? But if, if I actually go under materials and scroll down, it will even give me an Earth similarity index and chance of life. And... Earth similarity index is 87% with life likelihood of 30%. And that's pretty, pretty strong. If I remove the atmosphere completely, if I actually get rid of the atmosphere, in that case, the Earth similarity is still going to be pretty high, but there's going to be very, very unlikely any life on it. So atmosphere really means a lot here. If I increase the atmospheric pressure to like 30 atmospheres, making it super, super hot. Once again, the Earth similarity index is still going to be high, but no life likelihood. So this particular planet needs to have a very, very well-balanced atmospheric pressure of somewhat close to the one on Earth for it to actually have um, potential life or at least high habitability and high chance for us to colonize it. And since it's actually kind of close to us, I don't see why we wouldn't try to reach this planet sooner than other planets. Tau Ceti F, on the other hand, has a likelihood of 12%, uh, life likelihood, uh, Earth similarity of 80%, but that's because we added three atmospheric pressures. So here, because this planet is farther away from the star, it actually needs to have higher atmosphere as well. At five atmospheres, we kind of get more life likelihood and Earth similarity it has gone up as well, with I think the ultimate being four atmospheres. Okay, maybe not the ultimate, but a little bit higher than before. So what this kind of suggests to us is that we finally found a uh, sun-like star that is pretty certain to have at least two planets that are so-called super-Earths that seem to be in the habitable zone, and that are also seem to be, uh, for the most part, habitable. Unless, of course, the atmospheric pressure here is too high or too low. If they have Venus-like atmospheres, they're going to be uninhabitable. If they have Mars-like atmosphere, once again, no life is possible. But if it's something in between and if it's something closer to what we have on Earth, the chance for life here is actually really high. So I think this is actually the star we should be studying in a little bit more detail in the next few years. 
And that's really all I wanted to talk about in this video. And you can definitely check out the paper uh, that was posted in August of 2017. And this is from the scientists um, from the University of Hertfordshire, and I believe the lead scientist here is uh, known as uh, Fable Fang. Anyway, thank you so much for watching, guys. Come back tomorrow to learn something else. Let's finish this video by destroying the system using our superpower. And I'll see you tomorrow. Space out. And as always, bye-bye.